Hey guys, Jay Cini here, and today I wanted to do a bit of a quality comparison between the photos that you can get from a Samsung Galaxy S8 and a professional camera such as the GH5. So both of these take great photos. The Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, very high resolution. Same thing with the GH5S, 20 megapixel plus sensor, so you can get some great photos. However, the advantage of the Samsung is, of course, you can just put it in your pocket and off you go, whereas this is a little bit bulkier to carry. So obviously, these are made for very different things, so the photos are gonna be quite different. So without passing too much judgment, I wanted to compare the photos that you would get on a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus or any phone camera to the results that you would get on a much larger more professional camera. Okay, so when I went out to take these photos, I tried to get them as close as possible to one another. Now obviously between different camera brands, there's gonna be some difference because that's just how it works. The manufacturing processes are different and a number of other things. So this is the comparison. So the first one that I'm looking at is the photo of the leaves on the tree. Now as you can see from the photos, they do look quite different. Uh, obviously one has a much deeper depth of field and that is of course due to a lens with a much uh, wider aperture and that allows you to get a much deeper depth of field with having the background very blurry while the foreground is in focus. Now there is some blurring uh, that you can see in both photos but it's obviously a lot more pronounced in one of them than the other. One of the biggest things that I noticed when I was taking these photos, especially out the back here between the dark ground and the light sky, was that the GH5 performed a lot better when there's a massive difference in light. So for example, you can see that the ground is relatively dark and the sky is quite uh, bright. So the GH5 handled this one a lot better than the Samsung Galaxy, uh, purely because it just has better dynamic range in the camera, which means that it can capture more of the highlights, can capture more of the details in the darkness, whereas doing it on a camera that's like this size is quite difficult to do. Okay, so the next photo that I'm looking at now is the photo of the barbed wire. Now, same sort of thing as the last image. Uh, there's a lot greater depth of field on the GH5 due to having a lens with a very, very wide aperture. Now, having said that, uh, both of the photos, I think, still look really good. If anything, the autofocus on the Samsung Galaxy managed to really capture all of that barbed wire while having that depth of field in the GH5, uh, some of the edges of the barbed wire tend to be not as sharp. So comparing the barbed wire photos, they both look pretty good. They have a nice bit of blur in the background and uh, they seem both pretty sharp. So I think the Samsung has actually held up really well in comparison to the GH5 on this particular image. Okay, so the next photo that I'm looking at is the photo of my cat Milo. Now, I think that this is probably the photo where there is the biggest difference between the Samsung camera and the GH5. So as you can see from the photo, it's quite dark in the shadows and it's quite light in the sky. So there is a lot of range of light that the camera needs to capture and a lot of detail within the shadows and a lot of detail within the highlights. I think that the Samsung Galaxy really struggled to get the balance between the shadows and the highlights right. So there's a lot more room to play uh, with a camera raw image which has a lot more detail compared to the image that you get from a phone and I think in this particular photo especially it really shows up. Now another thing is when you start to move further away from your subjects without having a really wide aperture, you'll see that things tend to get in focus pretty quickly on the Samsung Galaxy compared to the GH5 which has a lot more background blur, a lot more depth of field as you start to move away due to the nature of the lens. So I think if you're looking to take a photo like this then you definitely prefer it to be on a proper camera as opposed to a phone camera. Okay, and the very last image that I'm looking at is the low angle in the grass. So as you can see, these photos are not too different. The only real difference is the amount of blur that you're getting from the GH5 compared to the Samsung. Now, both of them, I think, are quite good images. Now, obviously, you're getting a lot more blur with the GH5, uh, so it looks a little bit more ominous, a little bit more surreal uh, with all of that grass in front of the shot and the focus. But I think both of those images could work really well on an Instagram feed. Thankfully, there's enough detail in the camera to get some of those shadows back and bring down the highlights so you're getting some of that detail. So for this particular photo, I think they both performed really well. 
So in conclusion, I think it's fantastic that the camera quality that you're getting on some of the modern phones now is very, very good. Now, of course, they're not gonna be as good as a professional camera, but for a lot of certain shots, you can get results that are very, very similar to the point where it doesn't really matter. I think the place where you wanna have a professional camera is where the lighting situations are a little bit more difficult and you can see that there's a little bit more difference between the darkness and the highlights. Uh, getting that detail and being able to retrieve Retrieve that detail from a camera image is really important to getting a quality photo. Yes, I do think the shots are marginally better on the GH5S. Obviously, that comes with a price tag, but don't fear, keep shooting on those smartphones and you can definitely still get fantastic images from a camera phone.